Alright, so I've got Sai Ue, which is a Thai sausage. Good day everyone, Sawati Krab and Sabai Di Rue. In today's video, I'm coming to you from the largest city in northern Thailand. I waste no time in this video, so let's join Live Ryan at the airport, shall we? And good morning everyone, welcome to Chiang Mai in northern Thailand. I've just stepped off a flight from Bangkok Airways. Um, from Bangkok uh, to Chiang Mai, so I'm gonna be here for a day before heading back to Bangkok tomorrow. So I've got a whole day uh, here in Chiang Mai, so what else am I gonna do but eat, right? So come along with me because I've never been here before, so this is my first time in Chiang Mai. Um, so I'm very, very excited to see what this city has to offer in terms of food. Uh, yeah, so come along with me and follow me on my journey today. I'll bring you around to see what am I gonna eat. Let's do this. It seems pretty easy. When you come out of arrivals, uh, you turn to your left and you come out of door number one at the airport. And there are a lot of people um, from different taxi companies standing there. And I told them that I'm going to Rong Ren Ban Thai. That's the hotel that I'm staying. And um, the price they quoted me was uh, 150 baht, 150 baht. So I will pay this amount to the taxi driver. Yeah. Roy has it bad. I think that's pretty reasonable. I'm literally so stoked to be in Chiang Mai, which is presently the largest city in northern Thailand. It's located about 700 kilometers north of the capital Bangkok, and as of 2022, has a population of just over 1.2 million residents. Its kinder climate also sees a lot of Caucasian retirees here, which is understandable, seeing how agreeable the environment is. This city is steeped in history, going as far back as the mid-13th century. The original old city has a very visible moat surrounding its borders, and along this boundary, Remnants of the old wall can still be seen today, giving history buffs something to get all excited over. If you're new to my channel, my name's Ryan, and I create heaps of travel and food related content. This video series started in Sydney, Australia, where I flew to Seoul in South Korea. While I was there, I ate myself silly through Seoul. And I also took the bullet train to Busan, where I got into trouble at the airport there. I arrived into Bangkok yesterday, and after resting for the night, I find myself in Chiang Mai today for this episode. I return to Bangkok tomorrow morning to eat some more. My homeward bound journey will commence the next day to Sri Lanka, where I'll continue my way to Melbourne, Australia. Make sure you check out all the related videos in the description or even better, hit the subscribe button and bell icon so you won't miss what's coming up next on my channel. Make sure you smash the like as well, so you'll encourage me to keep on producing content like this one. So here's a heartfelt thanks and your support is very much appreciated. Alright, hotel check-in settled, um, so now I'm gonna head towards uh, Wara Road Market uh, to get something to eat. Of, I mean, uh, of course the room is not ready. I didn't expect it to be. Uh, I can come back at about 12 or 1, um, depending on how quick housekeeping is. So, uh, which is perfect. So uh, I shall walk to the market now, explore that place a bit, and then come back here um, once I'm done with the market. Yeah. I cannot wait. I am so excited to see what the market is like. So let's go find something to eat, yeah? Because I only had less than 24 hours in Chiang Mai, I needed to be very task-oriented in what I was doing. 
So I chose the hotel to be within walking distance of places I needed to be. So this morning, we're headed to the area surrounding the Latwara Road or Wara Road Market. I believe this will fill up our time very nicely for brunch. The area I'm in is really popular with both locals and tourists alike. Thai markets have a very distinctive smell of what can be best described as a combination of sweet basil, five spice, and moist sandalwood. If only I could transport these scents over the video, because I was immediately transported back to my childhood trying not to get lost, clinging on for dear life grabbing my grandmother's sarong amongst heated yelling back and forth with the stall holders. Nostalgia aside, my grumbling tummy now caused me to be guided by the drifting aroma of cooked food. And they came from all directions. So where the hell should I start? Well, how about walking down some nameless street where no cars can go? I was so caught up by the surroundings, I wasn't even sure where I was going at this point. But hey, I saw a steaming pot of something straight ahead. And that caught my attention. For my first meal in Chiang Mai, we say hello to Gui Tio Nam Sai. Literally translated, it means clear noodle soup. It's something mothers make for their children, especially when they're staying home from school because they're sick. This comforting bowl of deliciousness is commonly found in every Thai kitchen. Just because Nam Sai means clear soup, don't let this fool you into thinking this is a bland, tasteless bowl of dishwater meant for sick people. This is a pork broth flavoured with radish, onions, fish sauce and white pepper. It's one of the few Thai dishes which is very lightly flavoured and it's incredibly fragrant. You can further flavour it with table condiments of sugar, crispy fried garlic or if you prefer, more fish sauce. If you love everything pork, then you've come to the right place. From the extremely tasty pork broth, they are also pork slices, minced pork, pork balls, and it's just pork galore. I hate wasting food, and especially with this bowl of heaven, I just wanted to make sure to savour every single last drop. No one knows me here, so what the hell, I'm going for it. I'm pretty sure the cook will appreciate how much I enjoyed this meal. With that done, it's time to go in search of what's probably the only Thai drink I'll ever order whenever I come to Thailand. So one of the quintessential drinks I must always have when I come to Thailand is the milk tea. I mean, gosh, this is probably so bad for you, but it just tastes so good. Mm. You can never go wrong with a Thai iced tea. Yum. Uh, in case you're wondering what it's called, it's Chai Yen. It simply means cold tea Chai Yen. Yeah, but when you say chai yen, it comes like this with milk. It's pretty sweet and they add um, evaporated milk on top of the milk that they already have in the tea. Yeah, this sickly radioactive, almost dark orange um, iced tea here. This is how it looks like. Uh, amazing, I love it. With the delicious bevy in hand, it was time to go in search of something quintessentially Northern Thai. For us Aussies, Thai cuisine is generically Pad Thai, green or red curry, and a diluted sweet Tom Yum. But in reality, Thai cuisine is very varied according to regions. From the rich pungent curries of the south, coming this far north, the flavours become a lot milder. And this morning, I'm going to showcase Khao Soi, 
But looking for this dish was proving to be very elusive. For something so common, I could not seem to find it anywhere. I headed back into the markets where Google told me it was somewhere there. Okay Google, whatever. As it turns out, this stall was tucked beneath the markets in the basement where obviously it was so easy to find. So next time you venture into a market in Chiang Mai, make sure to see if they have a basement. You might never know what you'll find there. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I finally found it after going round and round and round and round. There you go. Tao soy, the quintessential dish you have to try in Northern Thailand. As I mentioned about cuisine up here in Northern Thailand being mild, this curry is one such example. As this region of Thailand is close to Myanmar and Laos, various versions of this dish can also be found in those countries mentioned. This curry is almost thin like a soup, served with yellow egg noodles, crispy egg noodles, and side condiments of shallots, pickled mustard greens, and a slice of lemon or lime. The best way to describe how khao soy tastes like, it's like having curry as a soup. I detected a very strong underlying earthy aftertaste of coriander roots, and the coconut milk was a very light dash rather than rich, sickly thick. I really don't mind this. In fact, it tasted almost similar to a Cambodian soupy dish called banjok. Perhaps they are related somehow? Because this was so light, it felt like I was eating air. I'm pretty sure I can smash another bowl of this delicious, tasty, fragrant khao soy. But I have to move on because, you know, I want to pace myself to eat something else somewhere out there. Back upstairs, I went in search of another Northern Thai staple of Sai e. It's a grilled pork sausage known to be phenomenally tasty because of the herbs and spices used in its marinade. What gives it that distinctive flavor is a curry paste which is used. And there's also a sharp kick of kaffir lime leaves. This sausage is also found in areas of Myanmar bordering Thailand. Since I just wanted a taste, I asked the stall owner to slice off a small portion of the sausage and had it cut further into smaller pieces. Because contrary to what you guys think, I cannot stuff something that long into my mouth at one go. Alright, so I've got Sai e, which is a Thai sausage, um, which is quintessentially northern Thai sausage. So uh, yeah, when you are in Chiang Mai, Sai e is the way to go. I'm going to try to get a piece out to try. Hang on. There you go. Mm. The flavors are just so Thai. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. I think I taste a little fermentation in there as well. But anyway, the spices, the flavors, all come together. And there is this explosion of flavor in my mouth. This is incredible. Mm. I wish you guys could smell this through your screens, but uh, yeah. Mm. Anyway, so now I'm done with the market and I've got the um, sausages. I, I cannot believe that I have had. This is probably my third snack. 
to the pork noodle and then I had the cow soy and now the sai ue sausage I'm done so at least for now um, so let's go back to the hotel to see if the room is ready all right I'll see you back at the hotel I just saw something interesting cannabis is legal <laughs> Well, I suppose there's a lot of argument uh, whether using cannabis oil for medicinal purpose is actually permissible. Australia is going that way, but we're not there yet. But here in Thailand, it's permissible. I remember just before we landed in Hong Kong, um, there was actually an announcement in the plane that we weren't allowed to bring any cannabis products into Hong Kong whether it's legal from where you come from or not it was illegal it is illegal in Hong Kong so yeah this remains an argument uh, between countries whether or not it's okay but in Thailand it's okay yeah while medicinal cannabis is technically okay in Thailand recreational usage is still a very gray area but that hasn't stopped shops like this one from jumping into the weed bandwagon. I was watching with fascination the different grades, flavors, and products for sale. And the ladies were kind enough to give me a rundown on why these products weren't harmful. Societal norms have so far hardwired my brain into dismissing this as a dangerous drug. So Thailand, being the first and only country in Asia to decriminalize cannabis usage, has most certainly forced me to look at cannabis from another perspective. Yeah, that was an interesting conversation with the girls in there. Um, hmm. Unfortunately, uh, as much as I would love to try cannabis, I mean, they've got cannabis tea, um, they've got uh, cannabis brownies in there, uh, I, but I can't, you know, if, if, I, if I go back to Australia and if they swap me at the airport, if they detect, then I get into trouble. Yeah, bloody hell. It's time we get over this, right? Cannabis is medicinal. It's supposed to be good for you though. <laughs> is it? I don't know because I've never had it before. But I'm very, very curious, I gotta say. Mm. By the way, um, the girls were nice enough to <laughs> give me a bottle of water from there. Uh, but they assured me there's no cannabis, it's just a bottle of water. <laughs> yeah. Not only was the room ready, thought the opportunity was ripe for me to take a dip in the pool right outside my room. This footage is part of hotel review I'm doing. But instead of being refreshed, I got lulled into what I thought was a mini afternoon nap. Whoa, guys. <laughs> it feels like a good morning, but it's actually evening now. The jet lag has finally caught up with me and after I did that, that little swim in the pool, I thought I'd just lay in bed for a while. And that 15 minute nap <laughs> became a few hours. So man, I mean, I just got up now and yeah, wasted a few hours in bed when I could have been out walking around. But anyway, um, this shows just how exhausted I am from all the traveling for the last few days because I haven't stopped. It's been constant. Yeah, and every day I wake up and I'm up and about in the morning and for the next few days um, all my flights are early morning flights and my stops at every destination is only an overnight stop so it's going to be pretty intense uh, for the next few days until I get to Sri Lanka yeah so tonight um, I thought we go to the night bazaar to see what's going on there um, grab some dinner and I'd like to check out a couple of gay bars as well. Um, of course, the gay scene in Chiang Mai is uh, not as vibrant as Bangkok. This is, after all, a, a very much smaller city. And yeah, I'll be, uh, it's interest, it'll be interesting to see how um, the gay scene is like here, yeah? So, um, dinner, and maybe get a foot massage after that, and then we'll check out the gay bars. All right, let's go. I guess this is it though. Um, Plen Rudi Night Market. So I mean it's a bit touristy because all the all the local markets are shut at this time of the evening. So 
I suppose we have no choice but to come to a touristy place like this if you want to experience markets. And uh, yeah, let's um, take a walk in there because I'm actually quite hungry. So I want to go in there to um, get something to eat, get my dinner sorted and then um, we'll just move on from there, yeah? Plen Rudy Night Market, being located at the heart of the tourist district in Chiang Mai, allows everyone to sample staple Thai street food at a very comfortable and relaxed environment. For the uninitiated, Thai food can be very intense and might cause the unsuspecting to implode from within because of the spices used. So for this group of tourists, there are stalls selling pizza, buffalo wings and barbecue steaks. So there's literally something for everyone. And together with a live band, really adds to this festive atmosphere. All right, so this is the kind of prices we're dealing with, right? When I had my cow soy uh, this morning, it was 30 baht. And a cow soy here is 80. Yeah, so you're definitely paying tourist prices here. I'm here now, so I needed to make it work. I wanted to show you guys cuisine which can't be found in Aussie Thai restaurants. So heaven forbid should I be ordering another serve of Pad Thai or Red Curry. So let's forget Kath and Kim for a minute, leave Fountain Lake Mall behind and step out of the suburban takeaway stalls, shall we? This is a braised pork leg, or khao ka mu. It was introduced into the Thai gastronomical sphere by Teochew migrants and has been a very popular Thai staple for as long as I remember. Its sweet, fragrant, soy, garlic, five spicish tasty experience is further elevated by using Thai aromatics to enhance the overall experience. The accompanying chili is one pungent sour little prick, but I can't get enough of it. So I showered my plate very generously throughout this meal with it. Absolutely heavenly. This next dish is Bla Pao, which is a salt-crusted tilapia fish slow grilled over charcoal. The result is this absolutely flavorful fish which is still incredibly moist inside. Grilled whole fish is definitely the way to go, especially when the flesh inside has been kept very succulent throughout the grilling process. This fish comes with its own dipping sauce, which is made from pounding garlic red and green bird's eye chili, which gives it this distinctive looking algae green color. It's further mixed with fish sauce, lime juice, and lots of sugar. Oh my god, this sauce is everything. Just make sure that you can handle the bum burning tomorrow morning. Yeah, so that is the cabaret show that I wanted to go to. Um, six Quet Show, um, the bar behind me. Uh, it is just after six now and the show starts at 9.30. But I'm not sure if I can stay awake because I'm seriously so exhausted from today. Well, from the, from the last few days actually. And tomorrow I've got an early pickup, um, taxi pickup at 5.30 in the morning. So maybe next time I'll spend a few more days here in Chiang Mai and then I can properly uh, enjoy uh, what this town has to offer here yeah, but otherwise uh, I don't think I can stay awake for uh, that show at 9.30 So yeah, I mean at least now I know where the gay bar is and uh, until the next time I suppose mm. Well, 
guys, I suppose this is the conclusion of my stay here in Chiang Mai, the largest city here in northern Thailand. Yeah, I'm just gonna head back to the hotel and crash and sleep because I've got an early morning pickup by the taxi at 5.30, so I think I better get back there to sleep. Alright, so if you've enjoyed the video and if you followed the series all the way up to this point, I'd like to thank you for your support. I've chucked details of my Instagram on your screen right now. So uh, hit me up there, chuck me a follow so you can see where am I traveling to in real time. And also uh, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you know every single time I come to another interesting location like this. In the meantime, take care all of you and I'll see you for my next video. Bye!